Welcome to this quick start guide to Python 3. This is an absolute beginner's introduction to the Python programming language. Assuming you have never programmed in Python before, welcome. So what we're going to look at is what is Python? We can look at who created it. Most importantly, what can you do with Python? And then we're going to actually do some coding, show you how to get started, and look at some really, really important initial information that I wish someone had told me when I started. To begin with, Python is a very, it's a, just simply a powerful programming language. We can use lots of big words like it's a high level, object orientated, but for now, just think it's a programming language. It is comparable to any great programming language such as Perl, Ruby, C, or Java. One of the most notable things about Python is it is so simple. It is almost as simple as writing in English, as you will see. Who created it? It was this guy. And there's some very inf interesting information if you want to read up on teachselfpython.com about how he created it, why he created it, and just some interesting information about the man himself. What can you do with it? Now, Python is, some people would say, the fastest growing language. It is growing in popularity every day, and you can do almost anything. You can make a social media site, you can make a website, YouTube uses it, Facebook, you can make complex games, the list goes on. Now obviously once you are definitely decided on using Python, one of the questions you'll have is how can I actually code in Python? Well you can download it yourself, just Google and type in download Python 3. You'll come up to a screen like this, follow the steps. If you're learning and just playing around, you don't want to actually download it, you can visit this website or this website. And both of them will allow you to actually code in Python in the browser, which makes it quite simple. If you have downloaded Python at home, you'll come up to, you'll see something called the idle. Now, when you open the idle, the shell, it'll look like that, and you can perform simple little calculations like that in the idle. So I could have a variable called a and say a equals to 4, uh, b is equal to let's say 2, and then I could say something like a plus b, and it allows you to do little simple things in the shell. However, if you want to actually create a proper program, a complete program, you would need to go file, new file, you have an untitled file, you would save that, save it somewhere special, such as something, my p fi first python, you end it in .py, it would do it automatically really for you at this point, and there we have the first python program, which has been saved on your desktop. So moving on, this is the example program that you looked at, and it's obviously not a very complex chatbot, but it's a chatbot. And let's analyze all the different features here and think about what is important, what you really need to know starting off as a beginner. The first thing is that in Python, indentation is extremely important. It actually has a meaning. So you can see that we've defined a little function here, and inside the function it's important that you indent everything inside a function must be indented. If it's not, you'll come up with an error. Here we have an if function, and you can see that inside the if function everything is indented. The if and the else must be on the same indent level. All these things are very important. Secondly, when you're writing a program, you've got to consider input, processing, output. What do you need? What's going in? What are you calculating? And what's coming out? Do pause the program to read this slide, which gives you an interesting perspective on the anatomy of a typical program, comparing it to how we perhaps function ourselves. How do you run a program? You just press F5. So if you're coding in Python on your desktop, you press F5. But in another sense, something you need to understand is that this main over here is calling the main function, and that's our terminology that we use. So when you're calling a function, you write main, this is calling, 
this main function. And when I say calling, I mean it's actually executing it. And we'll come to that in a second. We have different data types, string and integer. Python assumes that the default input is string, as we'll look at in a second. A function, as I mentioned before, def main. Now, the diff possibly comes from define a function. So we're defining a main function. You can define all kinds of functions. You can have a defined sum. You can have a, a function called bunny. And functions are very useful. You'll be using them a lot. As I mentioned before, the function call, this is calling the main function. Look at the variables in use in this program. Name is a variable. Age is also a variable. And a variable you can think of as a storage box for a value. So anything that you're putting a value into is a variable. And that's a useful analogy. Please pause the screen and have a read of that. I did mention that indentation matters really matters and we're going to look at that in a minute when we code. Finally, when we write print, when you see the command to print, we don't mean to actually print it to a printer, it just means output it to a screen. So I have got my first Python program here. Let's begin and consider a few things. So it's quite good, it's good practice to start with defining, defining a main function. Now this could be called anything. If you want to start with the main menu, you could have that. But I'm going to say def main. Open brackets, close brackets, and then you have a colon. Very important. If you didn't have that colon, it would throw up what's called a syntax error. Python automatically indents it. So when you have a function, you can't start typing here. You need to press the tab key and print there. So I could write welcome to the main function. This is a print command. Now if I run the program now by pressing F5 or whatever it is that you do, nothing would happen. And that's because I haven't called my main function. And you can do that by right. It must be absolutely to the left. If you put it there, it's not going to work. Absolutely to the left and that's going to be your first level. So if I call that, you'll see that it says welcome to the main function and we've produced a simple program. Now, we were making a chatbot, so let's go back to that. One of the first things you want to do when you're making a program is get user input, and for that you need to store that input into a variable. So suppose you were asking for the user's name. Name, or anything, you could call it n, would be your variable. You then use the command input, and over here, you write your command that you want them to see on the screen. So if I run the program, welcome chatbot01, enter your name, I could put something in, but it doesn't do anything. If I wanted to actually reference that name, I could write print, nice to meet you. Remember, all the text you want printed to the screen is in double uh, is in speech marks there, and then I have a comma, and then I write the variable name. So whatever name they input will then be printed to the screen like so. So if I put in my name and I write Jonathan, it says, nice to meet you, Jonathan. If I'd written something else, I would have recognized that. Now, when I ask for age, something slightly different happens. And in the, pro in the code that was given to you, we used an if function. Now, I made a comparison. I said if age is greater than 20, and remember you've got to have this colon after any sort of function or statement like that, then print, wow, that's old. Else, and notice that my if and my else are on the same indent level, colon, print, you're still young. This is a bit ageist, but never mind. Now, unfortunately, if I run this program, and I, it asks me for my name, and I put in my age, it comes up with an error message, which is very helpful, because it tells you, it suggests to you where the problem might be. This is something about string and integer. Now, the fact that we're working with age as a number 
or an integer is very key. So what's one of the ways in which we can resolve this? The fact that age is an integer and by default it accepts a string. So it's accepting what it thinks is a string input. Well, I could convert this into an integer. So it's an integer, open brackets and at the end close brackets. Now would that work? does work. There is in fact another way in which we can do this which is worth showing you and that is I could convert it into an integer here. So the age variable is being converted in an, into an integer at that point and this also works. So this is a very key thing to remember that we're working with different data types the default is really string. If you want it to be an, a number integer, you need to actually convert, make that conversion. So that was your first brief introduction to the Python programming language. We'd encourage you to work through the entire Solve and Learn series all the way from variables up to, you know, through to lists and file handling and advanced classes. But this is a very brief introduction and gives you an understanding of some of the, the very simple things, the initial things that you need to know.